In this video, we discuss spherical reflectors. Uh, we have already seen that you can use a concave mirror to produce a real image, and that reflectors can also produce inverted or upright images. Uh, we have also discussed that concave or convex mirrors can be used to produce magnified images or smaller images. Uh, we have also mentioned that for spherical reflectors, uh, we have the relation 1 over s plus 1 over s prime is equal to 2 over r, which is also equal to 1 over f. Uh, and the magnification is given by minus s prime over s. In this relation, the focal length f um, of the mirror is simply given by the radius divided by 2. Uh, but keep in mind that we have seen there is a sign rule for r, r is positive when the center of curvature is on the outgoing side of the surface, and r is negative otherwise. And so the focal length of the mirror f will have the same sign as r, since f is given by r over 2. Now coming back to the formula, uh, you can find the distance of the image s prime or the distance of the object s, uh, and you can also find the magnification. Uh, but as I said, the main difficulty uh, with this will be uh, to find the sign uh, of s, s prime, and r. Uh, and in the case of spherical mirrors, um, yeah, we also have the, the sign of r that we don't always have uh, for other devices. So uh, really, um, those sign rules are important. And so really go back to the video on sign rules uh, to be sure that this is really under control for you. In the rest of this video, I will introduce another method to find the location of images with spherical reflectors. So instead of using the formula, you can use a method called the graphical method. Uh, and it consists in drawing a few principal rays to identify the location of the image. Uh, the first principal ray that we will see uh, are uh, rays that are parallel to the optical axis. A ray parallel to the axis emerge in a direction that passes or appears to come from uh, the focal point f. So if you have a spherical mirror, the center of curvature is represented by the, the point c. And since the focal length is r over 2, then the focal point f is located at r over 2. right? So exactly between the center of curvature c and uh, the mirror. Um, and you can draw any ray that is parallel to the axis. And after being reflected by the mirror, that ray should emerge in a direction that passes or appears to come from f. Uh, but in fact, you don't need to draw many rays. In fact, you only need one. Uh, the only one that's interesting to draw is the one that also passes through the object. Um, and so this, uh, the second principle ray um, that we will see is a ray that passes through or proceeds towards f. And that ray emerges parallel to the axis. Again, any ray will follow this rule, but you only need to trace uh, one of them. And so you trace one that passes through the object. And finally, uh, a ray uh, through the center is not deviated and emerges at the same angle. In fact, you only need two rays uh, to find the location of the image, and we already have three. Uh, but for mirrors, there is even a fourth principal ray, uh, which is a ray going at the vertex of the mirror, and such a ray is reflected with equal angles above and below the axis. Uh, so the Libro text gives you uh, several examples for how to use the graphical method, and I recommend you go through them slowly to get familiar with this method. Uh, it works both for concave and convex mirrors, and we will see a very similar method for lenses. Now, one note uh, is that uh, if the object is at infinity, for example, when you're watching uh, a star or something that is very far away, you will not be able to trace rays uh, going through the object. Uh, uh, in this case, you need to take rays that are parallel to each other to uh, uh, interpret the fact that the object is at infinity. And so, for example, for a concave mirror with an object at infinity, uh, you can trace a ray that goes through the focal point f, and such a ray, as we have seen, must emerge parallel to the axis. 
and then you trace you can trace another ray uh, parallel to the first one uh, that goes through the center and that ray is reflected back uh, in the same direction and since uh, we only need two rays to find the location of the image. You see that the point, uh, the, the image is formed exactly at the position of the focal point F. Uh, and in fact, the same results can be obtained uh, with a convex mirror. The image uh, for an object at infinity in a convex mirror is formed at the focal point F. Um, of course, you could also find this result not graphically, but from the formula, right? If the object is at infinity, then we obtain that um, S prime will be equal to F. And so the image will be located at the focal point F. Uh, this is kind of old, but you can still see dish antennas on roofs uh, to receive uh, satellite TV. And uh, so in this case, the source of waves is very far away. So the dish will focus the waves at its focal point. And so the receiver is usually located uh, at the focal point of the, of the dish. Um, another example is a uh, solar thermal plant. Uh, there, there is a bunch of mirrors that are arranged to form a giant concave mirror. And the sunlight is concentrated at the focal point where it will uh, boil water usually. And then the turbine uh, then convert this energy into electricity. Now, you should also know that the reverse is also true. So if the object is at the focal point uh, and then S is equal to F, so then the image will be at uh, infinity. And this is used, for example, for a torchlight uh, or the headlights of your car. The light bulb is located at the focal point of a concave mirror and the image of this light bulb is then located at infinity. So the rays of light will emerge parallel to each other, uh, and this is to have light uh, as far away as possible. Um, 